Don't scrap your old car. Send it to Ukraine. Um, new video this morning, Saturday, but this one's just been sent to me and I thought, well, if ever there was a video to film near the fence that may cause offence, this is it. The last time I mentioned the war, sounded a bit Basil Fawlty there, in a video was when I said that your electric car may be financing a war. People didn't like that video. They thought that I didn't understand what was going on between Russia and Ukraine and I was on the wrong side of it. Well, I'm not going to say anything about any of that. Please tell me in the comments. Let's just look at this article. I've titled this one, Send Your Cars to Ukraine. This is Car Dealer Magazine, published yesterday. London used car dealers urged to send non ULES compliant part exchanges to Ukraine. So this is people that are trading in their cars on the ULES scrappage scheme. And there's another video that needs to be done on that because it's a giant scam. It's not as simple as, I fancy a new car, let's go to the dealer, they value the car, they book it in under the scrappage scheme. There's loads more paperwork, it's a real mess. But London car dealers are being urged to consider sending non-ultra low emission zone compliant used cars to Ukraine to help the war effort. Wait for it. Charity Car for Ukraine, contact me, is urging dealers to think about donating diesel 4x4s or pickup trucks for use on the front line, rather than refuse taking them in part exchange altogether. Car Dealer Magazine reported that several used car dealers across the capital had stopped taking non ULES compliant cars as they were struggling to sell them on. What? Uh, um, really? Because the part exchange scheme generally is affecting London. Why don't they just ship them off to auction at a place outside London? Because London isn't the whole of the UK. There's more to the UK than London. Why don't they just chuck them on one of them BCA lorries and send them to an auction? Greedy car dealers. Oh, there's a surprise. Um, cars that fall foul of the new emission rules have seen their values tumble in the capital. As I said, tumble in the capital, um, not elsewhere. As drivers face 12, a 12 hour 50 daily charge to drive them in the zone. As of the end of August, the ULES includes London's outer boroughs, including Bexley, Bromley, Harrow and Hillingdon. All of which, thankfully, have blade runners who are chopping the cameras down at an alarming rate. And I noticed in a group the other day that someone had been pulled over by the police and the policeman had quietly said to them, we can't keep up. There's that many cameras coming down. There's not enough police to investigate it. Um, so basically keep doing it because you're winning in those areas. Um, if you don't have blade runners in your area, become one. All you need is a mask and masks are coming back in anyway. That's a video for another day. Londoner and volunteer for car for Ukraine, Richard Lofthouse, said we're actually working on getting the London mayor to tweak his controversial ULES scheme to allow the right vehicles to go to Ukraine rather than get scrapped. So Richard Lofthouse, who's a volunteer for car for Ukraine, wants Sadiq Khan to change the rules so that cars can go directly to be used in a war. In order for that to work, it needs to be a war that Sadiq Khan and the people above his pay grade are on the side of. You know, it's got to be a war that they're invested in. Um, and maybe if the people who are behind C40 cities, who's behind Sadiq Khan, which basically ends up at the World Economic Forum and all those guys, if they are pro-Ukraine, then that will probably go through. Comments, put it in the comments. I'm not saying anything. I don't want to get in trouble. But until that happens, we're also interested in good value pickups where the pricing reflects the pariah status. Big Chelsea tractors, pickups, that sort of thing. In some cases, people have been so angry at the scheme that they've given us the vehicle directly instead of accepting a terrible trading deal only to know that the car will be scrapped. Difficult one for me, this, because I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the car being donated to a cause instead of being scrapped because these scrappage schemes are a gigantic scam. And if you go back to my video from well over a year ago when I only had a few subscribers, I did a video on the 2009 scrappage scheme and it's horrendous. The amount of cars that were lost to that scheme is scandalous. I don't want to see good cars traded in and get scrapped, but I also don't really want to see a good car get traded in to go and be used to go and kill someone in a war that I don't know very much about. I, 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 just, I don't really feel like that's a win. Maybe some of these people from some of these charities 
can um, contact me to do a video together to correct me because I know you'll all correct me in the comments anyway. Last year, car dealer reported that Car for Ukraine, which modifies cars from the UK and across Europe for fighting on the front line, the cars are fitted with armour plating and machine guns and have been used to rescue civilians and attack Russian aggressors. There's that story some years ago of a guy who was a plumber in the USA and his car ended up in Afghanistan with a machine gun on the roof of it. Um, and it was a bit controversial and a bit odd to see your own car being used in such a way. If your car is going to be fitted with armour plating and machine guns, um, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I'm quite a peaceful dude and I don't really want my car that I traded in, a car that I've loved for many years, to then go and be used to kill people, whichever side they're on. Uh, surely what we should be doing is peace, like we should be pro-peace in this country, but we're, we're not, we're, we're quite clearly pro-war. Um, everyone's got their Ukraine flags up because they want Ukraine to win, but really, surely we should be flying white flags and trying to get resolve with what's going on there. And again, before I get totally torn down in the comments, because I'm not a political commentator and I'm not a war expert and I've not been to Ukraine or Russia, so I'll leave it to the comments for you guys to sort this one out. I just think that you're better off saying, hang on a minute, guys, we should all get along instead of picking a side, donating an absolute ton of money that goes to questionable places and then sending vehicles to them that they can mount machine guns on so the good guys can kill the bad guys in a situation where it's absolutely not clear which ones are the good guys and which ones are the bad guys. I said I wasn't going to get into it. I said I was going to let you all fight it out in the comments, but that's me getting into it. Sorry about that. Um, Fighters using one modified vehicle even shot down a Russian cruise missile. Right-hand drive vehicles are particularly sought after as they confuse Russian snipers who shoot at the wrong side of cars in an attempt to target the driver. So they don't want my Chrysler Sebring, despite the fact that that would have looked very good with a machine gun mounted in the back seat and a guy in the front driver's seat with a V6 engine and some Ray-Bans on, uh, you know, driving along going dug -a -dug -a -dug -a -dug -a -dug -dug from, from the back seats of the Sebring. I'm getting a little bit, that's getting like to be some sort of dramatized war movie. Um, I sold the Sebring anyway for slightly less than the scrappage scheme is paying. So maybe I should have like scrapped it. That would have been brilliant on the news, wouldn't it? Imagine that, the news propaganda outlets would have been all over that. American Chrysler Sebring mounted with machine gun donated by YouTuber to fight the baddies in the war. That would have been all over the newspaper. Um, maybe the chap who's got my Sebring wants to do that with it next. That was a bit of an aside, wasn't it? Uh, Richard Lofthouse, who drove a vehicle to Ukraine to be donated earlier this year, said, ULES offers a unique opportunity for the scheme to get its hands on cars that would be vital to the war effort. The car he delivered, a Ford Ranger, which is probably an MOT fail for rust, was being sold at the time as a direct result of the costs of ULES. He added, Car Dealer magazine reported that several London dealers were refusing trade-ins that they could not easily sell on. Like I said, lazy, just ship them out of London. There's more to life than London. And from everything that I've learned about London that's gone on in London in the last few years, it's dead. Just get out of there. Um, seriously, it's like a free-for-all. Um, it's a police state with no police. It's a CCTV capital of the world, pretty much. There's only about five places that have got more CCTV than London. But if you are involved in a crime, there's no way it's getting solved. Stabbings are up. Prices are up. Just get out of there. Everybody just get out of London. What, what are you doing living in London still? Um, all the Londoners in the comments being like, oh, we've been here for years. We love it. Well, then why are you letting it be destroyed by a gnome with too much power and an armoured Range Rover? There's a car that could get sent to Ukraine. Sadiq Khan's personal car. Write a letter to Sadiq Khan. Look, mate, what you need to do is donate your Range Rover to the cause. Come on, put your money where your mouth is. Get your Range Rover to Ukraine. I'll drive it there for you. There are at least a dozen UK groups taking vehicles regularly to Ukraine, ranging from Jeeps for Peace in Scotland contact me, driving Ukraine in Oxfordshire, contact me, and of course, Car for Ukraine with London representatives. 
Uh, I've already said contact me on that one. It was recently reported that such groups have delivered well over 1,500 vehicles, including armoured ambulances, since Russia's invasion last February. Um, the car4ukraine.com website details the charity's work and explains how it needs diesel vehicles. They don't want electric vehicles, do they? Electric vehicle, <laughs> it's another video, such as a Mitsubishi L200, Nissan Navara and Ford Ranger. Speaking to Car Dealer Live in a video that you can watch on the website, Ivan Alexi said, this is a genuine way people in the UK can help fight the Russian aggressors. These cars are vital and are used for a huge number of roles. Cars are disposable and easy to destroy. So we need a good supply. There's about a thousand that have just come off a ship, actually. Um, nobody really knows what to do with them because it's part of a giant insurance payout at the moment. But there's, there's around about a thousand cars that have just, what was the ship called? Fremantle Highway. That'd be brilliant. Send all of those brand new cars that came off that ship to Ukraine and let's see how good a Volkswagen ID4 is when you mount a machine gun on the roof and drive it at the Russian aggressors. Dealers may have cars that look tatty. I've got a car that looks tatty. It hasn't even got a door card at the moment. It's only got three wheels. Um, but that doesn't matter for us, nor me. As long as they drive and are solid underneath, we paint them for the front line and retrofit all the parts that are needed for active service. So there you go. I made a video a few weeks ago saying that your electric, the purchase of your electric vehicle was helping to finance a war. And now here is a way for you to directly finance a war by donating your old car to one side of the war. Now, um, go for it in the comments. Uh, tear me a new one on my politics and my summary. What do you think? Do, would you feel okay about your car being donated to someone that's going to mount a machine gun on it to try and kill people? Are you all right with that? Am I wrong? Is this the best thing ever? Should I be getting involved? Should I actually go and buy the Chrysler Sebring back, mount a machine gun on it myself and drive it to Ukraine and go get some some of them baddies? Um, will we be uh, this winter getting involved in the government sponsored two minutes of hate? Uh, gotta have hate. I just I don't know who to hate. Um, sensitive video i hope i've dealt with that in an amusing way because it's a very serious subject and it's messy very very messy right now i'm going to make a vehicle about electric cars um but you guys go wild in the comments let me know what you think um just like the last time when it just became a big free-for-all in the comments and i learned a lot actually um yeah i don't know i don't know like i said um if two of your mates are fighting, and even if you don't really like one of the other guys who's fighting, you jump in and you try and go, whoa, 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 what's all this about? What's going on? He took my Hot Wheels car. I, I've, he, that's my Hot Wheels car. No, you took my Hot Wheels car last time. Stop it. Stop fighting, because it's bad. The more you fight, the more people are going to get killed, and that's not good for anyone. Um, so stop your fighting. Unless the fighting is making some people quite a lot of money and we want them to carry on fighting because we're doing really well out of it. I'm going to stop now.